why hello there everyone i'm the kumo sensei and let us switch a bit of a screen there he goes why hello there everyone i'm the kumo sensei and today is another late night stream and i just got done exercising and a bit of training and from work as you can see i still have my shower hair on which looks kind of strange but uh i promise you it it'll look better just let it dry out but it is officially time to actually check out the anime season for spring 2024. Oh boy, I have to say, winter 2024 was very good. I, I'm not disappointed at all. I enjoyed it a lot. From, you know, the second core of the Apothecary Diaries all the way up to, you know, Banished from the Heroes Party. I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed, you know, this, <laughs> the winter 2024 anime. Now we're jumping into the next anime season, which is, uh, spring. Now hear me out. Usually when it comes to anime seasons, when it comes to winter, spring, fall, or winter, spring is my favorite time to actually see what they have. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, guys, this is like nostalgia for me. So... I am going to give everybody a bit of time for, you know, them to jump on in to this live stream if they want to jump in. And man, I have a I have a lot I really want to discuss here and a lot I want to say. But uh, I will go back into the winter 2024 anime and I'll give you my thoughts there as well. But for now, guys, I got to give everybody some time to jump on in. And man, I <laughs> just to let you know, I am caught up on most things. I finished up on most other things as well. And I do have some things I really want to say about. Uh, my hair is wet, so it's it's kind of annoying. Let me comb this a little. See, when my hair is wet, it kind of is like a mop. There it goes. That'll do. But, uh, yeah. I have a lot I really want to say. Because there, oh man, there is a lot of, I don't want to say they're bad. But I do want more, or I'm expecting something more. But I guess we can. Well, I'm gonna give a little bit more time for, you know, we jump in. Because I have, oh boy, I have so much I really want to say. But without further ado, guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing so far, I'm doing great. And uh, really, I've been just working, trying to get my tarantula business going, posting more voice work, and testing out some YouTube shorts. So let us wait and see, and I'll give you my personal thoughts within a month about YouTube Shorts. I will say this though, YouTube Shorts is not what I was expecting. Hello there, John. I hope everything's going well. We are we're going to be discussing about animes in a little bit. Give Let us give about another minute, and then I'll actually jump into the other page. But I just want people to get time to jump into this live stream. Your room is dark. Yeah, that's because it's late. And the lights are off, so uh, the lighting may not be the best. So that's the reason why I'm going to be transitioning in a little bit. But give us about 30 more seconds. But I am testing out some things. Uh, yeah, a webcam late at night. This is why I uh, <laughs> don't want to, you know, live stream too late. It's like a completely different tone. But uh, without further ado, though. I think it's time we jump into this anime list because I really want to talk about the spring anime of 2024. So, without further ado everyone, if you enjoyed this type of content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on my social medias, everything's linked down below, and uh, let us get straight into it everyone. So, we are officially going to be looking at this list, and I'm going to tell you without a doubt, anything that is popular, I'm going to be seeing no matter what. So Slime, Konosuba, and Demon Slayer. Those three, 100% I'm going to be watching because everybody, ev like, <laughs> everyone is going to be watching everything. All right, Konosuba season three, obviously we're going to be watching this or I'm going to be watching this. And I'm a big sucker for Konosuba. Even though the light novel is, the light novel is pretty much over, I do genuinely enjoy the series. Great comedy series and a great parody series of, uh, of what you call it, of an isekai genre now i do have a bit of concern because uh this for those who don't know they did switch anime studios so studio dean is not creating the third season is changed to studio drive and without and out of curiosity 
Let us check out Studio Drive because I don't really know their works too much. Okay. Oh, they're, oh, they're making the Uzumaki? I have high hopes now. Okay, that's pretty interesting. And they're doing Amagami san Okay, that's even more interesting. Huh. And they did uh, To Your Eternity Season 2 as well. Actually, in my personal opinion, this catalog doesn't seem too bad. So, uh... Let us actually wait and see what they do with this for Studio Drive. I have high hopes. Studio Dean, I, lo I love Studio Dean's Sakuga style, but this isn't so bad though. So let us move on. Demon Slayer, this is self-explanatory. We're going to be watching this no matter what. I do find it kind of interesting because uh, for those who don't know, uh, no spoilers here, but I will say this. The training arc is very short. Like, I don't know exactly how they're going to put this into like 12 episodes or something. Because I just don't see that happening. Because this arc, this, uh, the high stress training arc, for those who don't know, is a very, very, very short arc. I'm not going to spoil what happens in it. But essentially, this arc is the shortest arc in Demon Slayer. Like, legit. So, I don't really understand what they're going to do with this. But I do have high hopes, though. I do love Demon Slayer. And, uh, Ufotable, they have... A lot of debt they still got to pay off but they do uh, create a lot of great animes but let us move on <sighs> slime season three so reincarnate as a slime here's my honest opinion so don't hate me for saying this but it's it's lost a lot of momentum now granted there was the movie with the scarlet uh whatnot it was okay but the movie's not canon by the way which was Kind of the, the reason why nobody actually went and saw the movie for uh, Reincarnate, as a, Reincarnate as a Slime. So I really want to see what season 3 does because we do know that uh, Rimuru will get his rematch. But even but even then though, there's still... Uh, I, just, I just hope the fan base is still strong because I do think Reincarnate as a Slime is a decent Isekai series. And I know the, the genre of Isekai is overdone at this point. But uh, I do have high hopes. So let us move on. Mushiko Tensei 2, Season 2, Part 2. I am not a big fan of putting things into Part 2 because I it just confuses like people to the core. I think a great example, without a doubt, is uh, Attack on Titan with all the parts. But I do love Mushiko Tensei, so I will watch this regardless. My Hero Academia Season 7. I saw the spoilers on Twitter. I've been spoiled. And I have to say, man, it's very interesting. I the okay, I'm not gonna spoil what happens because like I saw it on Twitter, so it kind of ruined it for me. But I but I have to say, Horikoshi, man, if like what he done makes sense, I guess. But it's a very interesting turn, <laughs> twist of events. Just put it that way. No spoilers, but I'm very hyped for My Hero Academia. Now, granted, it has lost a lot of momentum, so not so not very many people are talking about it. But still, though, people need to talk about my hero. Though I really do think where the manga is at right now is pretty interesting. The Misfit of Demon King Academy Two Part Two. Boy, I have okay. So uh, let us discuss about this anime here for a second. So after the whole incident with the main voice uh, actor for Anos Vodigold, Tatsuhisa Suzuki. This anime has gone downhill. A lot of fans want him back. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, he does a very good job voicing Anos Vodigode. The only problem is that the whole drama that he got caught up in with having an affair with Lisa doesn't do him any justice. But I'm not one to judge it. Look, I'm not the person to judge his character. It is up to you to to, to actually judge that. And, for, and I'll, I'm not going to lie, that video I made talking about it is one of my most viewed videos on this channel. So it's, it's very interesting to see like how people respond to this. My Year Season 7 is going to hurt and Class 1A needs therapy. Man, they all, they, all need, they all need it, I'll tell you what. But, but, but let us not spoil it for those people, man. They, just let them enjoy it, you know? But overall though, 
I'm not going to be watching the Misfit of Demon King Academy, but uh, it, to each their own. Kaiju number eight. Okay, let's okay. We gotta get the cat out of the bag here. But we're talking about this anime. So this anime actually, uh, people are not happy about this because people think that this anime here, the anim, uh, the animation quality is not great. But we don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out. But based on what we've seen so far from the character visuals, it doesn't look too good. But hey, beggars can't be choosers because people. People were wanting this to get an anime, and the moment an anime gets announced, people were not happy because the animation style was not up was not up to par. Data Life Five, I actually love Data Life, but for the love of my life, I always tell people to actually just play the visual novels, like like play the visual novels. It's it's pretty good. Kaiju number eight will release in both sub and up at the same time this April. Yes, it yes it will be, and the reason why is because Crunchyroll is actually uh the one that's licensing this, I believe. So yeah, it's pretty obvious, and it is it is our uh, production IG. Production IG is pretty big, but I'm not the biggest fan of production IG. Their art style is pretty good, but everything else kind of is mediocre. But hey, let us see what they do, right? But anyhow, though, let us jump. Let us jump. <laughs> Spice and Wolf. I love Spice and Wolf. I honestly... Oh. Hello. Oh, man. Y'all people. <laughs> okay, people don't understand. When it is by Studio Passione. Passione is not a bad anime studio, but I... I'm a big fan of Spice and Wolf. Like, I actually love Spice and Wolf. The light novel is a 10 out of 10. If you've never read it, I highly suggest it. It is... It's an old visual novel, I would admit that. But it holds up so well. It's crazy. But, let us move on. The regular Magic High School Season 3. I did not even know Season 3 was happening until just recently. And it's by Studio 8-Bit, which isn't the original studio, but whatever. I'm not gonna lie, I really love the regular Magic High School, but this anime comes in slow. And what I mean by slow is this. The first season came out in 2014, spring of 2014. That is 10 years ago, over a decade ago. And after 10 years, they're only on season 3. And not to mention this light novel is already done. There's 28 volumes and I highly recommend people to just go read it. This is kind of the problem when it comes to anime adaptations is that it takes so long to adapt uh, to it. Like, it takes so long to get an anime sequel for like a second season, third season, etc. That by the time like it comes out, it already lost a lot of momentum. Like, I, at this point, I really just recommend people to just uh, read the light novels because uh, in my honest opinion, this anime here is not that bad but since it's taking so long by the time it actually reaches the end it's going to be like 20 something years because man i'm not even kidding when i say it this and like this anime adaptation needs a lot to cover before they're caught up like finish like th there's a lot man when i say a lot that is an understatement because you have to understand this this uh series here has spin-offs other character light novels and whatnot. There, there's a lot to cover here, but let us jump. Late Back Camp Season 3. I will actually watch this, but more so just to myself as like a side anime watch, I guess. Whisper Me a Love Song. I'm, I'm going to pass on this. I love the Yuri genre, but here's my problem here with this series. Uh, Sasayaku Yoni Koi wa Utao. Look. Whisper Me a Love Song is a Yuri bait quote unquote to romance series. I love the Yuri genre and I love romance, but the reason why I don't feel too strongly is because the Yuri anime are not good. Yeah, N not trying to be me, but to each their own. But let us move on. Sentai Dashikukaku. Go, go, loser ranger. I actually, <laughs> I'm going to watch this series. 
but I'm going to go in with no expectations. So that's all I'm going to say. It seems interesting though, I won't lie, but I don't think it's going to be like a big hitter, but I don't I don't think it's going to be terrible either. And, and I did talk about this on this uh, on this channel, this anime here when it was announced, but let us move on. Hadanoikun Tokoi no Yamai, a condition called love. This is the high school romance series. It is a shoujo series. I mean, it is a shoujo demographic, my bad. So, eh, probably will watch this, but who knows, right? Euphonium Season 3? Man, that is crazy. Okay, hold up. We gotta talk about this. Is I totally forgot about this anime here. Big fan of Kyoto animation and rest in peace to everyone lost that day during that fire. But my god, it, it it's been a boy, I've been hit with nostalgia. <laughs> okay, allow me to explain. It's been an extremely long time since Kyoto Animation has been making stuff. Don't get me wrong, they still make animes, but it slowed down a lot after the whole incident with the fire and whatnot. Rest in peace to everybody caught in it. But it's good to see Euphonium Season 3 again. But it, it's been a while, so that's pretty interesting. Black Butler. I'm a, Okay, here's the thing. I am the biggest fan of Black Butler. I love almost all of the anime openings from Black Butler. I do not think Black Butler has a weak anime opening. Period. Even the worst one is not that bad. The only issue I have with Black Butler is that the anime adaptations is all over the place. Season 2 for Black Butler is not canon. The ending for Season 1 is not canon. Book of Circus happens right between episodes 12 and 15. 15 of uh of the first season and the book and here's the thing the anime for black butler is pretty bad in terms of putting things where they're supposed to be because their stories are all, are just all over the place like it's it's pretty bad on that aspect so i really just recommend people to just go read the manga like i, I highly recommend people to go read it so let me say this once and i'll say this again Please go read the light novels. I mean, the manga, my bad. I said light novels, I mean manga. J. Michael Tatum is an amazing voice actor. Like, people people do not give him much credit at all, man. Because, like, like you don't even notice that he voiced characters. Like, he, he voices Sebastian from Black Butler, obviously. He voices, uh, what you call it, uh, that one guy, Tokyo, Tsukiyama from Tokyo Ghoul. And then he also voices, uh, uh, what you call it? Okabe, Ritaro Okabe from Steins Gate. Like, Mago J. Tatum, amazing voice actor. S seriously underrated, in my personal opinion. I, man, you know, one day, if I ever get into voice acting, I really hope that I can get to meet him as an equal. He seems like a really, I don't know, like a really humble guy. But I, I don't know, you don't know until you meet him, right? But... Someday, though, guys. Someday. Windbreaker, I'm going to pass on this. Not interested. Unnamed Memory, I'm going to watch this no matter what. Can't stop me. So, Unnamed Memory is a light novel to where it's a romance light novel, but I truly love this series because I read the summary. I haven't yet paid for my subscription to actually read this, but from everything I've seen, it looks pretty good So for a romance series. So I'm going to check that out by myself, that is. Grandpa and Grandma turn young again. I have never heard of this, but I'm going to pass. Yozakura family, I'm going to pass. Another reincarnation, I'll pass. Bartender. They say this is like a... So from what I understand, this anime here is kind of like an undercard. Or like a black horse. <sighs> Look... I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this anime here a chance, but I really don't know how it's gonna go. But from but but I was told it has something going for it, so I'll check it out on my own time. That is pass on this Archdemon's Dilemma. Okay, the light novel. Okay, let us let us. I want to talk about this anime here. 
The Archdemon's Dilemma. The light novel is actually decent. I would say decent loosely. But this anime here, even though it is by Brain Space, I, I don't feel I don't feel strongly about. Not trying to be mean. So if, uh don't come at me, okay? I, I I really look, I just gotta see it to believe it. <laughs> just put it that way. But the light novel does have great illustration though, so there goes that at least. Chilling in another chilling in another world with level two super cheat powers. I'm gonna pass. Pass on this as well. For the uh the, the Duke of Death and his mate season three. I'm gonna pass on that. Reincarnated as an aristocrat. I think I talked about this here on the channel. The premise is interesting, but I just don't feel committed because at this point, Isaka, the Isekai genre has taken its toll on me to the point where I'm just just tired. Now I don't hate I don't hate Isekai by any means, but it, it just feels saturated to where I, I just don't feel strongly to like I gotta watch this Isekai because this is the one I really got to go check out. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Kae to Otome to Kamikakushi. I'm actually going to watch this. It gives me very... It gives me like the same vibes as Dark Gathering. I think Dark Gathering is an underrated anime. In my personal opinion. For what it is. But hey, to each their own. I know that Dark Gathering's conclusion wasn't so great. But then again though... Like, as an overall series, it's not that bad. This gives me the same vibes as that. So I will actually watch this. So uh, I'm going to watch this at my own time. Blue Archive, I pass. The banished former hero lives at he's, as he pleases. I'm going to pass on this one here as well. Nothing against it. Just saying I'm going to pass. Jellyfish can't swim in the night. I actually saw a promotion on this uh, on Twitter, but uh, it just doesn't interest me. But let's read this though. Yoru no Karage wa Oyogenai follows a girl who spends her nights wandering Shibuya, a place overflowing with identity. Unable to become anyone, the girl's life, the girl's life begins to change following a special encounter. See, I, I don't know what this is about. Th for those who don't know, this is an original anime that's created by uh, Dogakobo. Dogakobo is actually not a bad anime studio. They're they're like mediocre, you know. Yes, John, I know what Isekai is. Oh God, D please don't remind me. But <sighs> I'll probably check this out. I don't know. I, I just don't feel this one. The new gate. Oh boy, this is like sort of online, but uh, okay, let us discuss about the new gate. This light novel is not for me. I read the light novel way back, well, not way back when, but sometime back. I don't know exactly how long back, but I will say this though the light novel is not, is not for me. It, it, if you like it, you like it, but I had to be honest, man, it, it's pretty. I don't want to say it's generic, but for what it is, it's not that great. But who knows? Maybe, maybe it has potential to be something cool. But uh, don't don't hate on me for saying that. This is a studio collaboration by Cloud Hearts and Yokohama Animation Lab, which is pretty strange because I never heard of Cloud Hearts before. I, I'm gonna check this out real quick. This is a new anime studio. It was only it's only three years old. That's interesting. Okay, let's see. The Ice Blade. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. I'm gonna pass on this, but if somebody finds this interesting, I won't stop you. Re Monster. That is interesting. Re Monster. Is actually getting an anime adaptation and it's by studio dean so that's even more strange i honestly do think that Bree monster is a decent series but i really don't think that studio dean is the right anime studio to actually adapt this uh series that's a hot take by the way don't i don't hate studio dean by any means but i really i just don't see how they can do this but 
Hey, prove me wrong. I mean, they did go with Konosuba, so who knows? They're hit or miss, but let's see. Studio apartment, good lighting, angel included. I'm going to pass on this. This does not seem like it's for me at all. The many signs of voice act, voice actor radio. This is that. Okay. So I do know. Okay. This is kind of funny. So, uh, I do know the light novel. I had read the light novel. It was recommended to me because I'm a, I tried to get, cause I'm trying to get into voice acting. So here's the thing. Uh, is I it's more is okay it's less of voice acting and more so of just two buddies having fun and it while it does talk about a bit of voice acting stuff i wouldn't necessarily say it's uh like a great way to get into voice acting i guess it's more so of like like i don't know how to explain it it's just like two buddies voice acting put it that way it's like buddy cop almost the fable I'm going to pass on that. Does it seem interesting to me? Vampire Dormitory Pass. Tainama Okairi. Welcome home. That's a very interesting uh, title. It is by Studio Dean as well. Wow, Studio Dean's doing a lot. That's crazy. Uh-huh. Due to his status as an Omega Secondary ally, I want to give Virgo an order that I'm in for the... This is a slice of life and boys love. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Huh. With respect to my friends, to my homegirls that actually like boys love, I'll, I'll watch it for them. But hey, I, I'll give it a shot. It is slice of life, by the way. So maybe I can relate to it. Who knows? Girls band cry. Okay, so we actually talked about this anime here on the channel when it was announced. This is an anime original by Toei. So Toei is so it's pretty interesting. But okay, so let us talk about this. Toei Animation is pretty interesting. They're known for like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, etc., One Piece. So to see them actually make an anime original, Girls Band Cry. I wonder what what the point of it is because like you, you just don't have this OG popular like top tier anime studio that's create your like that's literally known for creating your childhood all of a sudden making an anime original. Because, like, it just doesn't happen that often. So this is if like a, this is a very interesting, uh, thing being announced in my personal opinion. So I'm gonna actually check out the first episode. I'm not expecting anything besides like a K on parody or something. It's not a parody, but like a similarity to K on. But let us move on though. Pass on this. Pass on this. Pass on this. Pass, pass. Karasu wa aruji wo ranbanai. This is by Studio Puro. What the? It's a novel too. So in that, so for those who don't know, the difference between a novel and a light novel, for those who don't know uh, their anime stuff, light novels are essentially thin or short chapter books. Novels are full on books. So this is pretty strange. I'm gonna read this real quick. The story is set in an, alter in, in an alternate world called Yamauchi, ruled by Yatagarasu clan, by the Yatagarasu clan, who are able to transform between human and crow forms. Yugiya, a beautiful and eccentric Yatagarasu boy, is chosen to serve the young prince. While encountering, while encountering various events in the conspiracy field imperial court, he forms a strange master servant relationship with the young prince. This is like the Apothecary Diaries, except, uh, by Studio Piero. It is a novel too, and that's interesting, huh? That's interesting. I'm not gonna watch this, but if it catches steam, I'll probably check it out. Let us move on. Oblivion Battery, a pass. Pass on this. This Token Rambo, a pass. Pass on this. Pass, pass, pass. Pass, 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 and pass. So that's pretty much it. That's kind of surprising. So the spring of 2024 is not that big. Well, uh, don't get me wrong, it is big, but it doesn't have much that I would actually consider watching besides whatever is trending. So like Konosuba, Demon Slayer, Slime Season 3, My Hero, and, you know, Mushiko Tensei. Everything else is like, yeah, I'll watch this on the side, but nothing, but other than these five, of like the five up here and maybe Spice and Wolf, I really, huh. 
I would like to know what everybody thinks about the spring 2024 anime season. Usually spring, the spring anime season is my favorite time for animes because you actually see what they're going, like what they're going to be putting out. That is uh interesting. I would, uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't think this spring 2024 anime season is that strong because it's really hit or miss. You either got something that's super popular or something that's like mediocre. So, uh, I'm not going to say it's a bad anime season yet because the animes are not out yet. So I have to see it and I have to actually watch it before I give my fair chance. Like before I give a fair shot, I believe of giving everything a fair, you know, a fair shake. So let us hope that these are better than what I expect. Right now I am curious. I am going to jump to the next anime season real quick. Just give like a brief, you know, look. Hmm. Oshinoko Season 2, obviously. Fairytale's 100 Years Quest. Tower of God Season 2. Alia sometimes hides her feelings in German. Oh, I'm Russian. That's my bad. Last Crusade. Last Crusade Season 2 is happening? Dang. That's crazy. It took that long for a Season 2? Oh, boy. So, I'm actually... Okay, here's the thing. I actually do like this light novel, but the anime adaptation makes it mediocre. But it's not bad by any means. But my god, I really do not think that season two will actually happen. I am. <laughs> I love the romance aspect of this, uh, of this anime, of, of the series here. But I honestly did not think for a second that a second season will be possible. But hey, lo and behold, anything's possible. Suicide Squad Isekai, I'll check that out, obviously. Days of My Stepsister Pass. Sorry, I'm going to scroll down. I just really want to give a, a general idea of what we're looking at here. Huh. Okay, sorry. I know I'm, I'm a little bit silent, but I'm very curious. Huh. T and K. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm silent, but I really want to. Delico's Nursery is getting an anime? That's interesting. My wife has no emotion. So, this manga here is actually really good, in my personal opinion, but. To each their own, I guess. Why is it not scrolling? Okay, now we're scrolling back. So the summer anime is pretty decent, actually. But it's not... I don't know. These two are not that great as of now. But who knows? Maybe more animes will come out. I thought the winter or the anime season... This... This... this <laughs> I think this anime season that just wrapped up was fairly decent. I honestly didn't think it was bad. I actually think it was pretty good overall. Like, if you look at this anime season and compare it to the to the next one, I think this one here is a much stronger uh, list in my just in my personal opinion. Though, I will say this though, Blue Exorcist was pretty good. I do think it was slept on though, which is disappointing because I love Rin. I think Rin with the blue flames is so cool, and Yukio as well with the eyes of Satan. But uh, no, I think I'm spoiling. But <laughs> let us not get too in, into it. Suki Michi. Okay, here's the thing. I think Tsukimichi was actually a very good series. And I think Season 2 was pretty good. It was slept on. But at the same time, it, it was met with a little bit of uh, mediocrity. But I still think it was a good season overall. Delicious and Dungeon. I love this series. Like, period. If we're talking about fantasy series that's just not isekai. Just, just pure fantasy as a genre. Freedran and delicious and dungeon is amazing period you can't you can't change my mind on that solo leveling was pretty good i actually think that solo leveling has potential potential i say that loosely though don't don't take it as like hey this is the greatest anime ever the problem with solo leveling is that it it, it starts to become a bit generic as the series goes on for those who know knows but from what i've been told about what happens later on in the series Solo leveling does 
go downhill a little bit because of uh i don't want to say it's, it's generic tropes but what it does with its characters is pretty not underwhelming but pretty generic but hey don't hate me for saying that but i still think slow leveling is is pretty decent classroom the elite man i love this anime but the light novel is much better season three was good but the light novel it, it cuts out some details i, I will admit that I'm, but the details it cut out is not like super major by any means but the only reason why i was kind of disappointed was because it cuts out a little bit of character interaction but in my personal opinion it actually builds character for ayana koji because ayana koji is an amazing character like he's a stale but an amazing character he has a lot of depth into him especially when you start learning more about him but it's just the fact that they don't utilize it to where like it makes sense i guess i mean it still doesn't make sense in the anime by you know if i'm being honest but still though they could have done so much more mash was okay definitely slept on though a sign of affection was pretty good it's kind of surprising how this anime was better than i expected if we're in like a mature romance series it's actually not that bad which is surprising to say the dangers in my heart season two everyone watched this even i did so uh that's self-explanatory everything else ninja kamui okay let us talk about this i don't know if this people are suspecting that this anime here ninja kamui was was uh the story was written by ai generated so uh don't take my word for that but the story does feel like it, it okay the story feels ai generated to an extent I, i'll admit that but but I, I i will say this at least though i honestly think the action sequences in this series is amazing that like the fighting is so cool but the story is pretty nonsensical it is nonsensical that that's the best word to put it so uh i look to each their own and i really don't I, I really don't know if this is ai generator or not people have been speculating that it is and honestly i would not be surprised if it is because of how the story progresses no offense to joe but uh you know it is what it is right the unwanted undead adventure this series is mediocre in my personal opinion even though it has a bit of edge lord in it it's pretty mediocre bottom tier carrot okay tomozaki kun season two i actually like this anime <laughs> because it because it's just so like gen it's not generic but it just teaches you how to not be a weirdo <laughs> that's all it really is the instant death ability anime i actually passed on this so this is so okay here's the thing so takato he has an takato has an op ability don't get me wrong but this series is not meant to be taken seriously which you kind of catch on on the first episode because some people think that this is this anime will get super serious and whatnot but it, it really isn't it's really just a uh i don't want to say it's a comedy it's more like a spoof of the isekai genre because the main character is just op so take that what you will banished from the heroes party I actually like the second season, but I prefer the first season though. The first season's pacing was much better, but the second season is not that bad for what it is. It is a bit generic on the second season, which made it which made me like it a little bit less, but it really isn't that bad though. Metallic Rogue Evangelion 2.0. No, I'm kidding. This is by Studio Bones. It did not do too well. That's all I gotta say. I did not watch this. Tells of Wedding Rings. I did not watch this. I did not watch this either. A lot of these I did not watch. The Weakest Tamer. Okay, so this here's the thing. This anime here is like a light-hearted adventure fantasy isekai series. And honestly, if you just want a laid-back series to watch as like background noise or something, I actually think this this series here is a bit enjoyable. It's not that bad. Oh, 7.56, which is pretty interesting. Tesh just ran a five mile marathon 
hey that's nice i love running marathons i actually uh, still do run marathons but my marathons are hell so yeah but i can relate though toes are killing me i can totally relate i can relate but this is an anime I actually did enjoy watching. I'm not look. I'm not finished, by the way. I'm not caught up with this anime here. But for what it is, it's pretty enjoyable. The animation quality is actually not that bad. I think the animation quality is slapped on to an extent. To an extent, I'm not saying it's god tier, but it has a very pleasant to the eye aesthetic. Oh, I'll admit it. I'll admit. It. I'll give credit where credit is due, guys. Butchy Giri, I, I did not watch that. Yeah, guy, Lisa, I, I did not watch. I did not watch. Fluffy, okay. I dropped Fluffy Paradise. So this series here, the light novel is very relaxing. This anime tries to be that, but it really just comes off as like very lighthearted, but not light aesthetic. I think this anime, uh, look, I honestly think that the weakest tamer is what Fluffy Paradise should have been, in my personal opinion. Not trying to be biased here, but just my personal thoughts. I still do love this anime. I, mean, I do. I still do think the series is pretty cute, though, Fluffy Paradise. But man, I, I, I just couldn't get to it, man. I, I, I'm sorry. Like that's all I gotta say. Did not watch this. Did not watch this. Did not watch this. Did not watch this. This or this. It's pretty cool though to see a uh, Urusei Yatsura remake, but did not watch, did not watch Shaman King Flowers. I did not watch. Now I did hear some critiques saying that the main character is well, okay. So here's the thing: I heard critiques about uh, Hana. He's legit just Yo 2.0, which is honestly kind of a bit of a letdown. But you didn't hear that from me. But uh, let us continue though. Did not watch. I did not watch any of these. Nope. Nope. And nope. Yeah, I guess that's really about all I've watched for the anime season. And Free Run, obviously. Free, Free Run is amazing. I honestly think Free Run is one of the greatest animes I've ever seen in modern anime for like what it is. The story is, is pretty. The story is, is nice. The message is powerful. The characters are very, very, very fleshed out in my personal opinion. And f man, I honestly do think Free Run is what I would consider a classic, like an actual classic. Because if like the 2010s era had like Tokyo Gold and Attack on Titan as their classics, the 2020s would have Free Run as that. It, I think Free Run is a must watch. I know that people might see Freedren as like overhyped but I really do love Freedren though like it's an amazing anime I even said it way back when when they announced the voice cast and everything Ayako Kawasumi she voices Kasumi and Samurai Champloo I actually like man you mentioned Samurai Champloo Samurai Champloo is one of my favorite historical animes there ever was it's funny because it teaches Japanese, it, it teaches some Japanese culture and history, but with a modern twist. It is so funny. I, man, it, it is, I love Samurai Champloo. I think Samurai Champloo is a classic. Everybody has to watch it. I believe it aired on Toonami at some point as well, Samurai Champloo. Because, man, hold up. Samurai Champloo. Because I'm 90% certain this anime aired on, uh, what you call it, Toonami. Because this is one of my favorite animes, like, in terms of historical depictions. Because it, like, there is, in my personal opinion, when it comes to this anime, there is no weak episode. Like, every episode is pretty good. <laughs> it, it either adds to the character's story, or it's like this, or it's like a episodic episode journey it's an amazing series man like, i actually do like this anime a lot and as a matter of fact i still do watch this anime uh some of the episodes back to back from time to time again 
There is that one episode where like there's the guys like the guys beatboxing. <laughs> beatboxing did not exist during this era of uh Samurai Champloo for historical accuracy, but they just added some guys from like a like a uh, a jukebox and some guys beatboxing. I still laugh at that. <laughs> God, it, it, it's so corny, but it it does it right. I, I love I love Samurai Champloo though. But yeah, though. And she voices Saber in the Fate series. So a lot of people don't know this, but when it comes to the Fate series, like Fate Zero, Fate Day to Night, Fate actually was an Iroge. And what that is, it's basically a hentai visual novel. And yes, I actually did play the original, uh, not the original, but I did play the Fate Stay Night Iroge. It is not worth it to get to the uh, the hentai scenes, man. Of Emi Ashiro and uh, Saber, Saber or uh, Sakura. It's not worth it. Because here's the thing. For those who never played the visual novel for the Fate Stay Night series, it is extremely long. And I truly mean long. So it takes about 40, it took me about 40 hours, actual 40 hours without skipping dialogue to actually get to the hentai scene. 40 to 45 hours. It's not worth it. It's not. Like it, it, it's, it, it's, it's just so, oh my gosh. It's not worth it at all. But for those who are wondering though, yes, Fate Stay Notch in the Fate series originally started as a, as a Iroge. AKA a hentai visual novel. So if you didn't know, now you know. But before Fate Stay Notch, it was originally called Fate Prototype, which which was a completely different thing. So originally Saber was actually a guy, and the person that was supposed to be an Emiyashiro spot was actually a woman with black hair. I forgot what's her name. Fate Prototype. Let's see if it's on here. Fate Prototype. Right here. So Fate Prototype is actually the true original Fate series. But what happened was the creator of the Fate series actually didn't really like uh, how it was portrayed essentially because, because the audience was going to be like, yo, this visual novel sucks. So what he did was he actually changed the entire story and made Fate Stay Night out of this original Fate series, quote unquote. So this is so this right here is essentially the true original fate series of what it's supposed to be conceptually. Daiki Hamano is now 39 35 years old. He's the voice of Gamma and as and as okay. I'm not a big fan of uh Gridman, no offense. He voices Luke and, and Jojo Part 5, Vaultus and Black Clover, excuse myself, and Looters, Freegan, and Bleach Thousand Year Blower. He can speak English. Daiki Hamano. I don't know much about Daiki if I'm being honest. I only know him briefly. And I say that loosely. That's why I say briefly as an exaggeration. Because I'm not going to lie. I don't know his, much of his voice works. Because here's the thing. He's been around for a while. Like not long. But he's been around for a bit. I think 29. Like, no not 29. What am I saying? He's been around since like. Um, 24. 15. 14, 15, I could be wrong, but he hasn't been around, hasn't been around too long. But look, I know 2014 is old, okay? But 10 years isn't that long. Just saying, in my personal opinion, when it goes to voice actors, but to each their own though. Like I know a lot about animes, but voice actors, I only know like the trivia stuff. I don't know like too in depth about voice actors. Not all of them, but some of them I do. But for those who are wondering who's, what's my favorite Japanese voice actor, definitely have a few though. Also something many people at gym don't know, Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night are in different timelines. They aren't connected. That is actually half right, half wrong. So, allow me to explain. Fate Zero is canon to every timeline, period. So what happened is, okay, if this is phase zero, phase zero is this line here, this OG line. And then you have, and then it splits off to three lines, three other timelines. So essentially, phase zero is the beginning, and then your three rounds is phase day and night, the original one. 
And then you have Fate staying out your limited blade works, and then Fate staying out having steel. But Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night are technically uh within the same timeline. All of them, like all the three routes are within the timeline of Fate Zero. Fate Zero isn't canon to Fate Stay and Night. Not just so that it's not connected to Fate Stay and Night. Really? Did he say that? I I need okay, I need I need I need okay, I need the sauce. Because from my understanding, because if that's the case, then Fate Stay Night to Limited Blade Works isn't canon as well. Because if, if because if we're going by that logic, then Illuminate Blade Works isn't canon. Because for those who don't know, Illuminate Blade Works is not canon, by the way. Originally it was created by so uh, allow me to explain for those who don't understand, because I, I'm guessing if we're judging by Nasu's uh, standards, which honestly is understandable. Oh, okay. So so here's the thing. When when Nasu created the Fate Se he started off with Fate Prototype, and then he remade it into Fate Stay Night. But the original Iroge for Fate Stay Night really only had two routes. So essentially what that means is that the two routes that you had was uh face day and night and then you had the other route was uh uh Sakura. So those are the only two routes you had because uh what you call Illuminate Blade Works was not canon. Illuminate Blade Works was uh, uh Illuminate Blade Works was made as an original route by Studio Dean back in 2009, I believe. So technically so technically you wouldn't consider a limited blade works to be canon as well then if 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 we're going by nasu's work there are many contradictions in phase zero that don't connect to face day and night the affordable change fate zero a, a bit but nasu still says not canon to face day and night all the words face and font fate strange nasu confirmed that all the spin on series are parallel or are stay and night i know that though i guess I guess that makes sense, I guess. I mean, that is fair, though. But Zero is like a pre... See, the thing the thing that confuses me is that Zero is a prequel, though. It's not necessarily a spin-off. It's a prequel. So... How do... Like, how does it contradict itself, though? That's the thing I don't understand. Because if, if we... If we if we think about it, it just wouldn't it just wouldn't make sense. I do think that Nasu did confirm that all the spin-off series are parallel universes, but I just can't see it for Zero. Did he did he actually did say the Zero was uh not canon, or did he just say the spin-offs in general? Because I gotta see that interview. Because like because Zero is not a spin-off, it's a prequel. A Taurus backstory in Zero isn't the same as Fate Stay and Night. What? Isn't the same. Interesting. Really? Because it's pretty much the from what I can remember from way okay, don't get me wrong. I watched Phase I watched Phase Zero when it came out. So this is 2011, 2010 when I watched it. From my understanding, it's pretty much the same though. Atoria being taken out by Mordred and whatnot, and then the fall of the Knights of the Round Table. It's still pretty similar, actually. Because like. <sighs> hmm. It wouldn't make sense then. I, I need to be convinced. You, you, you have to pinpoint. Okay, here's the thing. Pinpoint me to the direction of where Nasu said that Phase Zero was not canon. I really gotta see that. Like, just tell me where I can actually find the source. But it's still not canon. Fate. Russ, I think you're kind of confused because Fate Stay Night was not created. When it comes to Fate Stay Night's anime adaptations, it was not by, by Ufotable. It's by Studio Dean. So, like, like what you're, the contradiction is not the, it's not what, it, what is being told. The contradiction is you, Russ, because you, you're making it confusing for me. Because, like, I know my Fate stuff. Like, I actually, 
No, my fate, fate. Oh, unlimited blade works. Okay, that's what it is. Unlimited, okay, unlimited blade works is not canon. That's that's for sure. Because you have to, because uh, a lot of people don't understand. Illuminate Blade Works by Illuminate Blade Works by Ufoldable is actually a remake of Studio Dean's movie of Illuminate Blade Works that came out in 2009. So, just a bit of correction for those people uh, who don't understand what we're talking about here. In 2009, Studio Dean created a movie of another route called Illuminated Blade Works. And then in 2014, Ufotable readapted or pretty much remade that whole anime of Illuminated Blade Works into an anime series. But the original Face Stay Night adaptation was pretty bad by Studio Dean though. I'll admit that much. But I'll search it up later about Nasu and the whole thing with Face Zero and Face Stay Night. Pretty interesting though. But yeah, I guess it could. I guess it would make sense to an extent. But I just gotta. I just gotta do my own research on that part. But the original Face Day Night anime is pretty bad. But I'll admit, the the visual novel though is pretty good. But I don't think it's worth forty something hours. So, it, just to get to the just to get to the hentai scenes, it, it really isn't worth it for those who play the uh, the visual novel. If you never play the visual novel. The only two routes you really get is uh is essentially Heaven's Feel and the original Face Day and Night, but it, it's not really worth it though, in my personal biased opinion here. But still though, pretty interesting though. But anyhow though, I'm getting sidetracked here. We're talking about studio uh Ufotable and whatnot. I like Ufotable, but I have to say they're in debt. In, in, in terms of anime studio. It's kind of funny how Ufotable is still making animes though. That anime studio is surprising in my personal opinion. So so for those who don't know, you st uh, about a year or two ago, Ufotable, this anime studio, got exposed for being in debt because they're in severe debt, but they're still making animes. And I believe their reasoning was that is the view is the audience's fault for wanting good anime qualities so that's why they're in debt which honestly is kind of valid but at the same time though if you're in debt please please stop forcing yourself to make animes because i want to talk about studio affordable now that uh, we mentioned the fate series here's the thing they made demon slayer the fate series and some of like the greatest animes to ever exist but for, but for, for but for the love of God, please just pay just pay off your debt, because I know that anime debt is a thing, but it has gotten much worse, man. So I really would like to see if they actually would discuss about their debt again, which they probably will never, because uh, <laughs> it was a one said and done. I was like, nope. And I was surprised how it got leaked because it's pretty surprising, but. You can't ignore their you can't ignore taxes because they'll come back around to haunt you. But still though, you photoable man. I just I really just hope that they just stop making animes for a while. Like just slow down. They have though. Because right now they're just focusing on Demon Slayer. And honestly, I think that's the better move. Just milk a Demon Slayer as much as you can. Or like their movies and stuff, and they use that money to actually pay off your debt. <laughs> They're doing that. I promise you they're doing that with their movies and whatnot. But hey, to each their own though. Don't just don't take my word for that. I'm just speculating here. Don't hate me for saying that though. But big fan of uh, Ufotable. Just really wish that they can pay their workers and keep everything in check. Which most anime studios nowadays can't really. But hey, to each their own though. Like I stated, I'm not here trying to say my opinion is right. Oh, but still though, we, that's pretty much all I got to say about the anime seasons for, you know, the season of anime for winter and spring. But anyhow though, if there's any open thoughts anybody wants to make about uh, upcoming animes or anything anime in general, might as well discuss about it right now. Because if not, I guess I'm going to bed. I don't know. I really don't have much to do anyways. I do got a train tomorrow as well, so anything goes everyone. 
Ah, mm -hmm. oh, but yeah, though, it's crazy. It's, it's so... Anime flies by so fast as you get older. That's why I, I, I'm i trying to back away from anime a little bit to focus on life. But man, I gotta admit though, if I have free time, I'm gonna try to watch anime. But the only time I do have free time is usually around the time I go to bed. So really, trying to catch up to everything is not easy for me. I, I'll admit that. Watching anime is much more difficult now than it was back then. <sighs> but that's the thing about growing up though. You kind of had to learn to... I don't want to say let go, but... Put it, put it behind you to an extent. But as of now, though, guys, I, huh, I have a lot of expectations for the next anime season, and I hope you guys enjoy the stream because I think that's really all I got to say for today, though, guys. So, I guess I'll call this a stream for today. So, without further ado, everyone, I guess I'm going to bed because it's super late. But as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to stick around, and uh, follow me on my social medias linked down below. And with that, I guess that's really about it. So, see you.